Well, I want to begin by thanking Doug and Lauren for their work in putting together Stanford Health Policy. As each of them mentioned, we at Stanford have for many years had amazing health policy research and teaching going on in many different areas of the university. The Freeman Spogli Institute, uh, the Department of uh, Health Research and Policy in the School of Medicine, the Center for Primary Care and Outcomes Research in the Department of Medicine, um, some amazing faculty in the law school, the business school, and I'm excited about this entity, this, as uh, Lauren described it, uh, joint venture uh, of Stanford Health Policy, being able to bring people together um, in a collegial and, and uh, goal-directed fashion uh, to further the amazing research and teaching that's going on in health policy around the university. You know, last year we had a working group, uh, and Doug uh, was one of the co-chairs of that working group, look university-wide at what should we be doing to promote and encourage the great work we have in various areas of policy at Stanford. And we considered a number of different alternatives, we being uh, the president, the provost, and, and the deans, a number of different alternatives. You know, should we have a school of policy studies in the future? Uh, should there be other departmental entities? We decided really that, that the current structures, which evolved um, organically, that is, they evolved very much from the faculty, uh, that the current structures were working really well and that the best thing to do was to encourage, uh, as much as we can, interaction and uh, uh, joint collaborations among the various groups. And I think the Stanford Health Policy that uh, Doug and Lauren and others have put together really furthers that end. I guess just in making a few brief remarks to you today, one of the questions that we ask a lot, it's a question I ask myself a lot, a question that a lot of folks ask me and, and I'm sure many of you, and that is what is, what should be the role of academic medical centers in discussing alternative health policies, in discussing the success of our healthcare delivery system, and ultimately in making a difference in reforming our healthcare delivery system. What should be the role, and then what is the role, and how can we bring those together so that whatever current role we have um, in, in health policy related matters at academic medical centers like Stanford Medicine, what could we evolve into one day uh, to better serve our society's needs uh, related to health care? And that's a question we've asked a lot here um, at Stanford. It's a question that Lauren and Doug and many of you in this room um, have given a lot of thought to. I'm really excited that I believe we are beginning to come up with some ways we can address that need, that need to have us as an academic medical center, a leading academic medical center, chart the future for how we can improve the delivery of health care um, in our country and then ultimately around the world. For us, that vision of how we fulfill that need uh, begins with uh, a heading that we describe as precision health. We have all heard a lot about precision medicine. It's a major initiative of President Obama, and every academic medical center in the country today is doing some version of precision medicine. Precision medicine is about using genomics, big data science, personalization, in order to individualize the treatment of severe acute diseases like cancer, heart disease, and neurological diseases. And we for sure do precision medicine at Stanford. We are a leader in the area, and we want to continue to innovate and lead in precision medicine. Where we see our unique opportunity is to take that one important step further, and that is to create a vision around precision health. Precision health using the same enablers of genomics, big data science, and personalization, but applying those in a predictive and proactive way so that we can prevent many diseases, or when we can't prevent them, we can diagnose them much earlier. And that vision of precision health has brought us together as a community. It's a vision that we've articulated very much uh, as a collaborative group in Stanford Medicine, my colleagues uh, Chris Dawes and David Entwistle, 
uh, our faculty, the leadership of the two hospitals. It's a vision that leverages our strengths in genetics at Stanford, our strengths in data science. And it's also a vision that brings us together as we build a network of care that's a part of Stanford Medicine, as we begin to provide a lot more primary care than we historically have done in the past, as we begin to interact with and ultimately um, create a vision around our community hospital, uh, Valley Care in Pleasanton. Because really what community-based care is about and what primary care is about is achieving that vision of precision health. It's about keeping people healthy. It's about, from the academic point of view, understanding the determinants of disease, the predisposing factors of disease, and being able to more effectively intervene earlier. You know, it's, it's a rather surprising statistic that if we look at a pie chart representing the determinants of health, maybe 5% are genetically based, 20% of the determinants of health are based upon the health care we receive, 20% are based upon behavioral factors, and roughly 55% of the determinants of health are socially and environmentally determined. And one of the things we hope to do in Precision Health is to address um, and, and do scholarship around the social and environmental determinants of health in ways that I think it's been challenging for many academic medical centers to do in the past. And of course, there's no better place to do that than at Stanford because our academic medical center is so well integrated with and such an integral part of this great research university so that we can interact with our colleagues doing environmental science related research. We can very much embrace the future we have in public policy and healthcare policy and bring those all to bear on how we deliver healthcare in our system and ultimately how we deliver healthcare around the country. I'm really excited about the symposium this afternoon. I want to again thank Doug and Lauren for all the time and effort you and your teams have put together in organizing it. And I want to thank all of you for coming and sharing your afternoon on what is a rainy day, the first I think we've had since March or April. Uh, so no better place than to be right here and to listen and learn and participate in what I know is going to be a great symposium. Thank you very much.